No. October is the start of the flu season, which lasts until the end of March of the following year. And for the prevention and the control of the seasonal influenza virus, the CDC or the Center for Disease Control strongly recommends that everyone six, six months of age and older needs a flu vaccine every year. Medical doctors also recommend and encourage senior citizens to get pneumonia vaccine once every five years. And, there's, and those for you who had chicken pox before are also advised to get the shingles vaccine. These vaccines are highly recommended to prevent such illnesses to individuals and to spread of them as well. Many medical doctors, medical doctors working in the hospitals, nursing homes, doctor offices, and home care like Aleta and I are obligated to follow standard precautions to protect ourselves and our patients. We need to, prop, uh, we need to do proper hand equipment hand and equipment sanitations before and after each patient care. If needed, we, are also have, we also have personal protective equipment, such as facial masks, gloves, and gowns, which can help prevent us from bloodborne pat pathogens and other human bodily fluid that can be harmful to us and can infect us and make us sick. Germs, bacteria, and viruses are very, very small, microscopic in size. But once infected by it, can really make you sick, weak, and to some can prove to be deadly, especially for those who have weak immunities, heart, and resistance. I just heard last week that we have our first casualty from the flu virus down in Fort Lauderdale. I know some of you, or most of you, already have good habits of hand sanitation by washing your hands with soap and water and using the hand sanitizer out there. And as the saying goes, the ounce of prevention is better than cure. In the same way we protect our bodies from germs and diseases, we also protect ourselves and our homes from other dangers like accidents, evil people, and even bugs. In our homes, we put up locks, alarms, security cameras, and other protective tools to prevent bad people or strangers to come and invade us and attack us and harm us. Some of us also have pest control system to stop and prevent those pesky bugs and critters in coming our homes to get to our food and worse, bite us and make us sick. It is nice to know that we put a lot of effort in taking care of ourselves, keeping us safe and away from harm and danger. All these measures protect our physical bodies and they are well and good. However, as Christians, we should also put the same or more diligence and effort in keeping and guarding our heart our spirit, for our spiritual well-being. King Solomon wrote in, if you can open your Bible, please, in Proverbs 4, 23 to 27. Proverbs 4, 23 to 27. 23, watch over your heart with diligence. Other Bible translation says to guard your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of, what, of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put devious speech far from you. Let your eyes look directly ahead and keep your gaze fixed straight in front of you. Watch the path of your feet and all the ways will be established. Do not turn to the right nor to the left, Turn your foot from evil. And Apostle Paul reminds us also in 1 Peter 5, 8, just like Jacob read, to be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. The devil is looking for those unattended, unprotected, and weak heart, one that is, that, one that is easy to take over. John 8 Verse 44 tells us that the devil is a liar, the father of all lies. He is a stumbling block, as in Matthew 16:33, and also a very crafty serpent, Genesis 3:1. He is very uncanny and tricky. He comes in many forms in order to deceive us 
and to come into us and destroy us. He will use and exploit our weaknesses, and all of us have our own weaknesses and weak points. And his mere purpose is, to, is for us to sin, to be, to be separated from, and to fall short of God's glory. Both King Solomon and Apostle Peter warns us to guard our heart and to be watchful. They want us to be wise and to discern good from evil. We need to protect our hearts and ourselves as Christians from, being, from things that can destroy us, such as doubt, bitterness, temptations, and all other things that can be, destruction, that can be a distraction from, our, from the truth and from, the faith, from our faith. Psalm 73, 26 says that our heart without God in control is weak and fragile. Not protecting our heart is not wise. It is dangerous and may cause us to stray, ultimately damaging our relationship with God. Our heart is our connection with God. He looks at and searches our heart and not our outside appearance, according to Jeremiah 7, 17, 9. In Exodus 20, verses 4 to 5, says that he is a jealous God who wants our whole heart. In Matthew 6, 24, we are told that we cannot serve two masters. Either we hate one and love the other. God wants our undivided attention and wants us to be strong, pure, and healthy, to be able to serve, honor, and love him, and him only. He wants a clean, he wants a heart that can stand and endure trials, tribulations, and worldly pleasures. One that doesn't get distracted or easily swayed. God does not want a heart that conforms to the world, as my Mylan said a while ago, nor a weak, nor a sick, weak, and vulnerable heart that can be easily attacked, controlled, and taken over by the devil. So what do we need to do and how do we keep, guard, and protect our heart from being infiltrated, infected, and taken over by the devil? First point, we need to study and know God's word, the Bible. We need to know what is right and what is wrong, what is pleasing and not pleasing to God. In Proverbs 19, verses 2 and 3, it says that it's, it is not good for a soul to be without knowledge. And he sins who hastens with his feet, the foolishness of a man twists his way, and his heart fret against the Lord. In Hosea 4, 6, it reminds us also that God's people were destroyed for the, for the lack of knowledge. Just like what I said earlier, the devil is the father of all lies, and he comes in many different forms. Most of the time, he is dressed up in a sheep's clothing, or sometimes he disguises us, he disguises himself as an angel of light, as in 2 Corinthians 11:14, 14. He deceives us by telling us what we want to hear. Unless we know God's word, we don't, we don't stand a chance, or nor do we have any way to defend ourselves and, and oppose the devil. We need to be diligent in seeking and knowing God and his word, like the Bereans did, who in uh, Acts 17, 11, received the word with eagerness, and examine the scriptures daily to see whether the things taught them were so. Knowing the Bible, the book of instruction, on how to develop and live with a strong, healthy, and pure heart is very beneficial to us. It teaches us what to do and how to overcome temptations, trials, and deceptions. Second, we need to exercise and practice what we learn so that we will be, prepa uh, so that we will be prepared and ready when tested and challenged. According to Ephesians 6, 13, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. God's full armor, the truth, the righteousness, gospel of peace, faith, salvation, and his word, God's word, are the tools that God has given all of us to help defend and protect us from Satan and his schemes of deception, temptations, and tribulation. We need to practice, we need to practice on how to use all of them so that we will be well-versed 
with them. Not knowing how and when to use them will not be helpful or beneficial to us. For, like for example, the US military, no matter how good and well advanced their arsenal is, if they do not know how to use them effectively, then their equipment is useless. Uh, when King David was a young boy, he was well versed with his slingshot, which he used and practiced with the bears and lions to protect his flock. With God's help and his knowledge of the weapon, he killed the giant, Goliath, the army of God, the enemy of God, and his people. Again, we need to practice, practice, and practice. The best time to practice is now. We need to be proactive in showing our Christianity rather than just being reactive. Third, another way we can protect and guard our heart is for us to find good friends and good company. Who can help us? Ephesians 4, 9, 12 teaches us that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if either one of them falls, one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him when he falls and have not another to lift him up. Of course, we need to be careful when we choose or find friends or company because according to 1 Corinthians 15.33, bad company corrupts good moral. People who, are, people who we are with really do affect us and influence us in life. There's a quote that goes, tell me who your friends are and I will tell you who you are. So where will be the best place to find good company? Especially in times of trials, tribulations, temptations, and worldly pleasures. Here, here in the church, with your brothers and sisters in Christ, we are family in Christ, ready to help each other, encourage one another, and edify one another. If one hurts, we all hurt. If one rejoices, we all rejoice. All for one, one for all. Unfortunately with some, the more personal issues, problems, and concern they face, both worldly and spiritually, the more they are missing from the church, the more they are into the world seeking worldly solutions. Galatians 6, verse 2, instructs us to carry one another's burden. And in this way, we will fulfill the law of Christ. Fourth, we need to be aware of the danger of compromise. Should never and should never compromise our faith with the world or, or entertain or give in to sin, even just for a little bit or just once. In Job 11:14. It tells us, if iniquity is in your hand, put it away, and do not let it dwell in your tents. And Apostle Peter also tells us in 2 Peter 3.17, to be on guard so that you are not carried away by the effort of unprincipled men. Once I've heard of a story about a little boy who saved the village from flooding. When the boy discovered a small single lick in a dike, he stuck his finger to stop the leak. If not stopped, that single leak could grow to a terrible breach and could flood the whole village where many will drown and die. Same thing with our heart. If we let a single sin or worldly pressure or pressure infect us, it will also grow, multiply, and eventually flood our heart. Remember 16, Luke 16, 13, it tells us that no one can serve two masters. Either you hate one and love the other, be devoted to one and despise the other. Compromise always begins with living and turning away from your first love, which is God, which ultimately leads to immorality, idolatry, and other sin. When we start lowering our standards here and there, compromise will start making its way into our lives, and there will be breakdown in our relationship with God. So what do we need to do? We need to keep and guard our heart by examining ourselves and work on our weaknesses. Satan will target and concentrate on our, 
and concentrate on hitting us where we are weak. We need to hold on God's word. And Apostle Paul reminds us to be steadfast, immovable, which means that there should be no room for compromise. Fifth, my last point, but not the least, we need to pray. Prayer should never be a last resort. It should be our first and done continually. But most especially when everything we could have done to guard and protect our hearts seems failing or have failed. We need to pray. James 5, 5 16, uh, verse 16 tells us that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avail, avails not much. Prayer is our way of communication with God. Without communication, there is no relationship with God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17 tells us, also tells us to pray without ceasing. God, wants, uh, God our Father wants to talk to us, wants us to talk to him, and wants to hear from us all the time. I myself, as a father, I enjoy and long for the conversation and talking to with, my, uh, with my daughters, even though we are thousands of miles apart. It makes me feel connected with them and still truly involved in their lives, even when, just like I said, miles apart, thousands of miles apart. Praying to God allows us to show that we honor, respect, and glorify Him. It allows us to confess our sins and make our requests known to Him. Matthew 6, verse 4, it reminds us to watch and pray so that we will not fall into temptation. The devil is very powerful. We cannot fight or overcome all the challenges and obstacles that he will put in front of us. Unless we, unless we pray and call upon God for help and for strength, the devil will break through our defenses and take over our hearts. But when we pray to God, who is much more powerful than Satan. Even us weak ones, we become strong. Philippians 4.13 reminds us that we can do all things through him who strengthens us. How many fathers here tonight will not help their children when they ask for help and guidance? And we know that they are honestly needing our help and assistance. Just like in Matthew 7 uh, verses 9 to 11 that says, Oh, what man is there among you when his son asks for a loaf, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will not give him a snake, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father, who is in heaven, give what is good to those who ask him? So is our God, our Father, who says, And lo, I am with you always. Many times, multiple times in the Old Testament, many prophets and kings sought, prayed, and humbled themselves before God when they were facing, when they were faced against many powerful kings and kingdoms to deliver them, to, to be delivered from their enemies. And many times, God saved and delivered his people. As Apostle Paul wrote to the Corinthians in Philippi, in, Philippia, in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters in Christ and our beloved visitors, let us always remember that God loves us even before we loved him and desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. He does not want anyone to be lost or separated from him. And he loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So with this in mind, we have to trust him, that he will help us to endure and to provide us the way of escape from Satan. Again, the five ways that we can keep and guard our hearts are, first, study and learn God's word so that we will know what is good and bad for our hearts. Second, we need to exercise and put into practice what we have studied and learn from God's word. Exercise will strengthen our heart and it will keep us on guard and ready to make defense and offense against the devil. Third, we need good company. 
because two is better than one. So let us, so let us not forsake the assembly like the habit of some. Fourth, do not compromise with sin. If we give an inch, Satan will take a foot, and then he will take our heart. Lastly, we need to pray. In, uh, Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 8, For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be open. These are just some ways of keeping and guarding our hearts. If you have and know other ways, that's well and good. The more ways we protect our heart, the better it is for us. For those of you who are here tonight, a Christian, carrying a heavy burden on your shoulder, we ask you to come forward so that we might be able to help you, lighten up your load, and pray for you. And for those of you who are not Christians, Christ also died for you. But unless you believe and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins, you will not be saved. If you are ready to obey him, or just want to know more about God's salvation plan, or you just want us to pray for you as well, we ask you to come forward as we stand and sing.